What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays. Standing here with a new shelf with some new movies and old movies and movies to my nose. So anyway, guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel. And uh, I will do my best to run through this episode and show you a movie that's been one of my favorites. It's a cult classic. I think it's very underrated. Um, it's a comedy horror. It's kind of a black comedy horror movie. But it, it really is more horror than comedy. But a mixture of both. So anyways, the movie I'm talking about that was released on Warner Archive Collection is The Fearless Vampire Killers. Or, pardon me, your teeth are in my neck. And uh, I really like what they did with this. The uh, They're using the old poster art. I love the black background with the red in his cape. It really sticks out. I would love to have this as a framed poster. That would look really cool. Um, of course, this movie is directed by Roman Polanski, the uh, Polish filmmaker who came to America in the 60s after uh, some big hits he made overseas. With, um, I made a, a couple of good movies, uh, Knife in the Water, and um, gosh, thinking of it, can't think of the name, but I always forget some. I'll put it in there. But, anyways, he had some big hits overseas, came over here, and uh, Hollywood was running to snatch up this new talented filmmaker to make him Hollywood lot, Hollywoodized, and put him into doing some stuff, but he really stuck to his guns. He got with some really good producers and he made some really good movies um, up until he ran in, ran, a, ran aground a little bit and had some controversy and, and a little tragedy before all that would end and before he would go back to Europe permanently. Uh, but let's talk about 19, 1966's The Fearless Vampire Killers for short. Um, it's kind of a semi, semi-comic horror movie. I uh, remember seeing this on TV way back when I was a young teenager. They would show it a lot, uh, late at night. Uh, I always remember seeing like a panned and scanned copy where it has a very interesting opening where, um, there's like a rolling picture that the credits really roll. And because it's, you know, wide, uh, panned and scanned, the, like, the, the words are really kind of big. And it, it just has this memorable thing. It has some animation and stuff, which is kind of based on what they did for the 2004 release of it. That animation there with the little man and the little figures there and the vampire, which was really cool. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you three releases that I've had over the years. Uh, my oldest being the Laserdisc. And this Laserdisc is one of my favorite Laserdiscs. I love the way it looks, um, the art on this, the way the movie itself looks when played, played back. Uh, they really went out of, the, out of their way to do art on this. Uh, MGM UA, it's uh, the company that released this movie and so many others, had a deluxe letterbox edition on a lot of them with a gold band across there, which I would see those in some stores and just flip through and be like, oh, I love these, you know. And But they went, they went so crazy cool with the art. I mean, they came up with some cool art. You know, the back's got cast listing it's got the original poster there it's got story breakdown it's got a cool photo of jack mcgowan and roman polanski and then it opens up to a gatefold where it's got some cool photos and it's got the chapter breaks on here and it uh has the trailer at the end the original trailer and a short very short maybe less than 10 minutes long a uh, little on-the-set documentary called All Eyes on Sharon Tate, which was kind of a, her just talking about some of her roles and stuff, which were, were shown in the theater between releases. 
something they did back then. But now they would show it on TV and various things. So, but anyways, really love this this edition. Um, it's it's not banged up. It's still in really good condition. It's definitely you know been worn, but they stuck a uh, sticker here and ruined the cover, uh, which I didn't even try to peel off because it would just tear everything off. But they ruined it. The people I bought it from by sticking a sticker on there. So anyways, uh, to 2007, something like that, I got it on DVD. I had it copied on VHS, had it copied on disc, and I wanted to get an actual good, solid-looking picture and a copy of it. So I got the DVD, which was all that was available at the time. And um, I think I got this either off eBay. It was probably one of my very first eBay buys. Or maybe I didn't get it off eBay. I think I got in a local record store and they had this and basically uh, it's almost a tr same transfer as Laserdisc um, it's got a vintage making of little short thing called the fearless vampire killers vampires 101 and it has the trailer um, and I think the Sharon Tate thing might be on here I'm gonna have to rewatch it um, but it might be exclusive to that laser disc, so that may make it stand out for you collectors out there. But when they released this last year, I think late last year they released this. It's new to me. It's still really new out there. Um, but they basically put the same stuff on here. They scanned it. They cleaned it up a little bit. Um, it's even got the same back cover, same photo, same movie critic quote um has the same features uh that both the same vampires 101 and trailer so um so yeah but you know it's really cool i like the artwork on there on the dvd and i love this movie so much i'm, I'm just gonna keep i'm gonna keep the dvd sometimes i'll upgrade and i'll get rid of some DVDs that I don't really want anymore. And they'll just be standard art, photo or something. Nothing really collectible or it makes it stand out. But I'm going to keep that. But yeah, this is a real treat. Um, this is uh, Warner Archive has really been putting out some really cool stuff. They're actually digging in and restoring some things. They kind of keep quiet about it and they just kind of stick it out. And, and you kind of have to wonder, it's like, is, has it been restored? Yeah. Is, any, is anything new? And, you know, you kind of have to wonder, but I, I guess that keeps you still wondering, you know, and discovering things about movies and Blu-rays and whatnot. But it's really good. Let's see, it opens up. It's got a, uh, the disc has the original poster art blow up on there. And I believe the DVD has a similar version of the original poster art there. Love that. Um, but the movie, you know, basically, uh, Roman Polanski and um, a guy that goes by the name of Professor Solsis or something, some kind of odd name. They all have, like, really odd, crazy uh, Transylvanian, crazy-ish name, European names, crazy variations of names. And anyways, the professor as he's known in the movie, and Roman Polanski as his assistant. Um, professor's an older man. Um, he seems like they have some kind of prosthetic on his nose, and kind of it's kind of funny, just the way he... It's, it's kind of got a really kind of almost a slapsticky kind of... The humor in it is a combination of that kind of humor, like falling down a ladder or something and mixed with black humor and but but the horror in it is really horror it's like some stuff in here is really scary the cinematography filming some of the black scenes some of the darker scenes in the castle the, the cinematography really just is, is some really good camera work on there and um they're basically traveling to the castle to kill the count he's known as count crowlock or 
Crowick, and uh, they they stay at a small inn. Uh, the, there's the innkeeper, the wife, his daughter. He has a beautiful daughter and like an ugly daughter and like maybe a relative or two that lives there and stuff. So they stay in this little remote village um, inn. Um, it kind of takes place. Um, the timeline, you, you, you want to think, well, this could take place in 1966 because they're up in the mountains in Eastern Europe somewhere deep inside of nowhere land. And this could take place there because these people could be backwards and they don't, don't know much of the modern world. Or it could be a fantasy, you know, and this takes place a hundred years before the, the year it was made or kind of a mixture. It, it, it kind of does that to you. It kind of really takes you into a, into the story where it doesn't really look like it's 1966 and it also doesn't look like it's 1866. So it's kind of a really cool. I mean, you get sucked into the story, uh, the locations, um, they stay there. Um, the, the beautiful daughter played by Sharon Tate kind of has eyes for Roman Polanski who they were newlyweds at the time. And he cast her in the movie. Um, and, um, so various hijinks and stuff happen. Um, and that night, the Count comes and basically bites the father and some other people. So there's some vamp, they wake up to vampires the next day and every hijinks and they're like, whoa, we got to get up to that castle and kill, kill the, the vampire and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, there's, there's some cool, um, there's a process shot where they're kind of on a sled where they're sliding down a hill and you gotta got the back projection now in any other movie that would be like man that is so cheap looking but in this movie it just kind of gives it part of its charm part of its funniness mixture of like what in the world you know and then it's got the um some good exterior shots of a sled and horse a lot of snow trees real bleakness you don't really see the sun. there's no sunny shots in this movie it's kind of misty and dark and just before dawn and just before daybreak or you know before the sun sets and really looks good it's got a, so much flavor going on lots of little nuances and everything um i'm not going to tell you word for word um but it's such a great movie it's a cult classic um, I think when it came out, I think it was pretty modest. I, I don't think it was a wide-released movie. I think it did pretty good. Um, people, the studios wanted to work with Roman Polanski. And um, I think he got with Robert, was it Robert Town? Or uh, what was his name? Uh, Robert, Robert Evans, uh, the, big, the big studio chief at Paramount. Uh, swayed Roman Polanski over to Paramount where they started working on a script um, called Rosemary's Baby and uh, William Castle was the producer of it. He, he's a, at the time was a very famous director of horror movies and kind of schlocky movies and classics and stuff um, and it would turn out to be one of his last things he would do William Castle and um, this takes place in 68 so he did this movie right before that and I think sometimes it gets overshadowed by Rosemary's Baby everybody always Rosemary's Baby Roman Polanski it's inseparable but he did do a lot of cool movies he did a lot of cool movies good ones some not so good um, but I, I'm gonna do an episode on him one day and I'll have all the Roman Polanski stuff I have and all that but anyways it was a good movie um, kind of fell into the cult, you know, like people seeing it on TV or at a midnight movie or just various things like that. Um, I believe, you know, it was on VHS, you know, it was, I'm not sure before, uh, when did this come out? 1992, 91, when did this come out? This came out in 93. So, at the time, there was a VHS release along with this, of, of course. So, before that, I'm not really sure if it had a release. 
Um, it may have had a VHS release. Uh, it might have been the first time it was on video. But it's just just a fun little movie. I mean, if you're into horror movies, or if you're into stuff like the Hammer movies, um, kind of has that color going on and stuff like that. Um, um, British, European-ish flavor going on. I think you'll like it. If you've never seen it, um, uh, check it out. It'll be a fun addition to your Halloween movie programming this year. Check it out. It's a good movie. Um, I could say a whole lot more about it, but um, I will not. I want you to check it out. Do your homework. Google it. Get some good books about it. Roman Polanski. It's a great filmmaker. Um, he had that run-in incident at Jack Nicholson's house in Los Angeles, L.A. Um, 1975, I think it was, with photographing a girl who was... Was she underage? Was she not underage? I always think she was 17 or something like that. Something like, you know, and then that kind of got snowballed into him leaving the country. But before that, after this movie and after Rosemary's Baby, of course, Sharon Tate would be viciously murdered at her house while he was gone preparing for a movie called Macbeth, I believe, in Europe. And she was murdered and everything. And he, he came back and he was just devastated. And I, th and I think that you could see he, his life was kind of spiraling out of control a little bit. I think he made some bad decisions. I think with that girl photographing, bad decision. But um, I'm not going to nail him to a cross and crucify him. We've all made big mistakes. Um, I just like to keep their per people's personal lives over here. And if they created a piece of art, a movie, a statue, a painting, something, I will look at it over here and not just, I don't want to fall in love with the man who made it. I want to fall in love with the work he created, if that makes sense. So, check that out. Um, of course, read some stuff on Roman Polanski and check out some of his movies and stuff. And um, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I mean, go out and get this. This has been out for almost a year now. I think you should get it. I just upgraded to it, and uh, it's really good. I really love this movie. And check it out. I think I'm gonna watch it again and just savor it. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to subscribe and uh, ring the bell, and you'll get notified when I do a new episode. And comment I really want to hear from you guys comment what what you thought about Roman Polanski or or this movie in particular and, um, and there you go so till next time guys I will I am Mike and thank you for visiting gag films my channel and watching Mike's DVDs and blu-rays my collection later guys